Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to the latest in the series of videos that I've been doing of GT Sport driving tips and in this one we are going to look at asking the question of why fuel saving is so important. Now in this video we'll take a look at what fuel saving is, the techniques to do fuel saving and then at the end of the video we'll conduct a little test to try and show the actual benefits of fuel saving. So what is fuel saving? Well, it's very much what it says on the tin. Uh, if you enter a race where the fuel multiplier is such that uh, you can't get to the end of the race without doing, uh, just driving the car at its uh, maximum limit, then you're going to have to do some fuel saving either to uh, prevent yourself having to take on fuel or to sort of uh, make your pit stop shorter. So there is uh, several ways to do that, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Now fuel saving is certainly not everyone's cup of tea, uh, I think most drivers sort of reasonably high A+, plus, maybe A to A plus DR certainly know what it is and do it, but I think maybe more rated drivers just drive the car as fast as they can and don't really sort of uh, give it too much thought. So maybe if you're one of those drivers who doesn't do fuel saving, then this video might be, be for you and sort of uh, help to improve your results in races where fuel is a factor. So let's move on to take a look at the various techniques for fuel saving. So first up we are going to take a look at short shifting. Now short shifting is something you can obviously only do if you are using manual gears. Uh, if you're still using automatic then I would suggest that uh, trying to progress on to using manual gears is something you maybe want to look at. It's certainly uh, a big benefit, your car's faster down the straight and you can kind of control the throttle better, but most importantly in a fuel race where you need to save fuel, you can do some short shifting. So normally if you don't have to save fuel, you just drive the car to the, the maximum, you sort of fill up that rev limiter till it turns blue, then change up in gear. When it comes to short shifting, you obviously change gear a little bit earlier than that. Uh, in this example here we're looking at, I'm changing it around about 50% on the bar, and simply doing that can save huge amounts of fuel. Now this is, in my opinion, the best way to save fuel. Uh, it's certainly the number one way to be looking at. But, if that's not enough then there's also uh, other things you can also do. So next up we'll take a look at the fuel map. So the fuel map is something you can bring up in the multifunction display. And you can set the fuel to run from 1 to 6. 1 being the most power, 6 being the least amount of power, or the least amount of fuel being put into the engine. Now, if you're going to use the fuel map, then I recommend using one or two on the straights, so you're not sacrificing too much time, and then using a higher fuel map in twister sections, uh, like we are doing here, we're in the Autopolis short course, so the second uh, sector is pretty twisty, so you can afford to use a sort of higher fuel map and uh, minimise that time loss that way. Once you get back onto a sort of more power section, then you will be moving that fuel map back to uh, something much more powerful. So maybe, probably, I would recommend one at all times for straights, but sometimes that's not always possible. Moving on to the third way to save fuel, and that is the slipstream. Uh, and this kind of works in conjunction with the first two we've looked at. So if you're in the slipstream, you can do some short shifting. Use the slipstream to keep your acceleration up, and also once you're firmly in that slipstream and getting towards maximum uh, speed, then you can sort of move that fuel map up into. We're at six here, and we're keeping up with the car in front of us, which is running identical power. So they're running the car in front is running fuel map one and maximum revs, and we're able to put the car into four, five, and six fuel map and keep up just through using the slipstream. So that is one to keep in mind as well. Moving on to the fourth technique that you can use, and that is to use higher gears than you normally would. So obviously if you're using higher gears, you're not using as many revs, therefore you're losing less fuel. In this example here we're going to go into turn one and two in Suzuka, so normally we would probably go into fourth gear maybe for this first bit, and then drop down into third gear for the second part. But we keep it in fifth for the first part, and we just keep it in fourth for the second part. Probably take this uh, first part of the S's in fourth gear, but we just use fifth. But again, we're just using nice high gears and keeping the revs nice and low. 
Again, this is fairly similar to short shifting. Base used in sort of sections like this at Suzuka, sort of fast corners, where there's only really one line, so you can help to keep that car behind you. And lastly, we're going to take a look at what's called lifting and coasting. Uh, this is best used at sections of the track that are long straight and sort of quite long braking zones. So what you will do is rather than brake on your brake marker, you lift off the throttle maybe about 50 metres early and then hit the brakes into the braking zone. This is probably the least effective way out of the four, I would say, to save fuel. Uh, but it certainly can help a little bit. It's also quite a good tactic to use if you're kind of behind somebody and you're not sure on the braking zone. Uh, you can sort of use a, maybe a wee lift and coast into the first one and get a, a, a gauge on their, how they're using the brakes into a corner and they will allow you to start following them a little bit closer once you kind of know what they're doing. So that's uh, five ways to save fuel. Let's move on to taking a look at how saving fuel could be beneficial to you within a race. So what we have done here is we have set up a custom race, we're in the Group 4 Mustang, uh, set with Bob on. We've got three laps around uh, Le Monde with the chicanes, and we have set the fuel multiplier to 7, just to make sure that uh, fuel is going to be an issue over the three laps. So as we sort of uh, go through the first sequence of corners, we're not going to do any fuel saving whatsoever on this one, this is just going to be maximum revs. Uh, and then just take on the fuel that we need to once uh, we have to. But you can already see that we are struggling to get two laps out of the car. So we're definitely going to have to take on a reasonable portion of fuel cover pit stop, probably at the end of lap two. So down the Milzan straight we come. This is obviously going to burn off quite a lot of fuel. Uh, we're not doing any fuel saving whatsoever for this run. But what we'll do now is we will jump forward to the end of lap one. Here we go, through the last chicane, and as we cross the line, we are going to hit 51% of fuel. So for this lap, we have used 48%. Uh, and the lap remaining says we have one lap left. So we should be good to get around for this lap, and then we'll take on the fuel that we need to complete lap three. So into the scheme we come nicely. And we skip forward to the end of the lap and into the cut lane. So the fuel there reading 0.1 laps remaining and 5%. So we're not going to take any tyres on in this example. The tyre bear is only set at times one. Uh, so tyres are not an issue for us. So Le Mans still has quite a long uh, Pit sequence to get the car into the box. Here we come now. And we're going to start taking that fuel on. Now, we're going to fuel up to the diamond that you can see just after the halfway point on the marker. That diamond there is to signify how much fuel you will need to get to the end of the race driving the car in the same manner as what you've been driving previously. So we come out with 52% fuel. We went in with 5, so we have taken on. 47% of the fuel on that run. Now we actually finished the race with a little bit more fuel than we need. Uh, I think that's the game sort of slightly miscalculates how much fuel you need as the car gets lighter. But we complete the race with 7% of fuel left in the tank. And as the finishing time pops up here, this is what we need to take note of. That's 30 minutes. 0.09.9, so effectively 13 minutes 10 seconds for the non fuel saving one stopper there. So we're going to move on to the next example. We'll go through this one a lot quicker because we'll have to introduce the race if you like. So for this one, we're just going to do a little bit of mild fuel saving, uh, nothing too excessive. We're maybe going to change gear around about that 70% sort of mark on the rev. Uh, bar, the red bar there. So you can see it just changing around about 70%. And as we come out the first again here, you're going to see that's going to have quite a dramatic effect on the laps remaining reader. 
So at this point, say we've got two laps remaining, whereas in the first run, we we're already down to about 1.7 laps, I believe, at this point. So the, the laps remaining calculates how much, uh, how many laps you can do on the fly, depending on how you're driving the car. And it will adjust if you go from not fuel saving to fuel saving, it will sort of gradually adjust. So a handy feature uh, to keep in mind and one to keep an eye on when it comes to these fuel saving races. So you can see down the straight there we're just changing at around about 70% and we're just going to jump all the way forward to the end of lap 1 and as we cross the line we've got 58% fuel so we're already 7% better off than in the first run. Uh, and if we look at the lap times we're actually not losing any speed so the Mustang it seems to quite like being changed around about 70% on that, that marker. So into the pit lane we come at the end of lap 2 and we're going to come in with 21% uh, fuel. So we're 16% better off in fuel than we were for the non-fuel saver. So we're actually coming in with more fuel and if you look at where that diamond is, we actually have to take on uh, less fuel, it's actually much lower than it was on the own fuel saver because so we actually almost get like a double hit on how much fuel we've saved. So we're going to fill up to the diamond and we only take on 24% fuel this time as in compared to uh, 47 like I said. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it there, the time that we were stopped was uh, 5.4 seconds in the first round we were actually stationary for 9.4 seconds for the fuel savings actually saved us 4 seconds on the pit stop which is really quite significant so as we cross the line let's see if the fuel saving has been beneficial to our finishing time and there it pops up 13 minutes 0.04.7 so actually 5.2 seconds quicker saving fuel now we know 4 seconds of that came from the pit stop so I guess we've also drove the, the course a little bit better as well, but 4 seconds saving in a pit stop is, is quite a lot and it's technically free time. So this last run we're going to take a look at here is we're going to try and do the three laps without pitting. So maximum fuel saving, no stopper, we're going to use all the techniques that we looked at early in the video. So short shifting, we're going to use our fuel maps, then we get into the twisty sections like this. For short shifting, we're actually shifting around about the 50% marker initially. Going around these corners in as high a gear as possible. Again, this uh, corner running onto the mills and straight. We're taking this in fourth in the other two runs. We're just going to keep the car in fifth. And as we come to the end of lap one, we are a little bit short on fuel, but we're not too far off. Maybe a couple of percent. We're going to have to try and save a little bit more over the course of lap two. Uh, you can see that we are around about two seconds a lap slower than the first two runs, so saving that fuel is definitely costing us lap time, but nothing too dramatic over a four minute lap. Coming to the end of lap two now, and again we're still short on that fuel, so we're going to have to go even more fuel saving over this last lap than we were over the first two. We're going to start shifting maybe around 30% on the, the rev bar, maybe start using fuel mix 2 down the straights. So we come to the end of lap 3, we've managed to just about get the fuel leaked out. We are in 0%, but 0% does count as uh, a percent. We actually run out of lap fuel just as we cross the line. So yeah, the fuel starts at 99%, so you've got 100% fuel and it goes from 0 to 99. As we cross the line there, you can see 12 minutes 55.9, so actually 10 seconds quicker than the, the pit stop run. So, if it is an option, you do want to be uh, doing the no-stop if you can sort of uh, eat the fuel out without costing yourself too much lap time. So that's uh, my take on fuel saving. Hopefully there's been some useful information in here. Uh, as I said, a lot of drivers out there are well aware on how to fuel save, but there is newer drivers out there or people who maybe haven't watched anything or been too much research on the game. So hopefully there's been some tips in there for some people. Uh, maybe you had an old hand and you've maybe learnt something as well. Hopefully in the race demonstrations I've kind of shown you how beneficial it can be to your race. Uh, so 
maybe next time you sort of enter an FIA race that requires some fuel, you can maybe take that, that knowledge in and maybe get a better result. I certainly hope that's the case anyway. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button, that subscribe button, if you like what I'm doing on the channel. Thank you very much for watching again, and I shall see you on the next one. Goodbye now.